Sunday night dramatic entertainment, we bring you Armchair Theatre. monster just like a better get turning from his lair to murdering all the poor rabbits and sucking all their blood the wicked sly old vulture the nasty shifty little rat Uh, there you are, Miss Robinson, I will say. Uh, just dust my plant, the dust that collects at something shocking. Just to remind you that I won't be in for supper. Certainly. So you said. I didn't forget. It's cold meat anyway, so to keep. Also, I want to say that I meant what I said last night. I'm leaving here next weekend, and I want you to take notice. I must have some privacy. Of course you must, dear Bella Bratney, be the last woman on this earth to pry into anyone's private affairs. You can take my word for that. You went through all my suitcases and things. You turned out every drawer. You did it more than once, oh, too. I did Let's not, not discuss indeed. it anymore. Dear, a widow woman living alone has to be careful. When my husband was alive, and he was alive, God bless him. There was never a stranger set foot to cross my door, not a single solitary one. Let's not go over it all again. I'm sorry, but I have to change. My fiancé will be here oh, soon. Go ahead, dear. I'm not narrow-minded. He'll be here this minute. You mark my words. A young fellow that's curtains never late, uh, especially if he's a policeman. You didn't see him coming by any chance, did you? Me? No, why? Oh, I thought perhaps you'd have been watching out for him, that's all. I tell you, no, Miss, that I'm not nosy, whatever you may think. I was watching out, there was... Watching out for everybody, and you ought to know what I mean by that. No, I don't know. I can hardly bear to soil my lips with his name. Mr. Snow. What about Mr. Snow? What about him? What about him? If I knew he wouldn't be sitting over there all safe and sound in his charnel house, behind locked doors and whitewashed windows, if I knew what he was up to, he might be in Crumlin Road Jail by now, or Broadmoor, more likely. Now, come on now, Mrs. Bratney. You're imagining things. Oh, am I? Yes, you are. Picking on a poor old man like that, it's unfair. Unfair? I seem to remember a Dr. Ruxton and a Mr. Christie. They both seemed a bit unfair in their ways to me. Of course, uh, 
I haven't a fancy school and... You shouldn't dwell on these things, Mrs. Bratney. And you've no real reason to suspect Mr. Snow of anything at all. Oh, haven't I? How would you know? Well, if you have, you should tell the police at once. <laughs> police? A lot of useless wasters. People getting cut up and murdered in every newspaper. And the police having athletic sports up in the showgrounds. A decent young fellow wouldn't join the force. Now, don't try picking on my fiancé now. You were quite rude enough last night. I pick and who I choose in my own house, and don't you forget it. You not mock me, miss, for four pounds a week, lodger or no lodger. No intentions of mocking you. Yes, you had, yes, you had, not the first thing either. Think I'm ignorant because you're a top and tape in school teacher. Now, Mrs. Let Bradley, me I would tell you I live before I ever set eyes on your four pounds a week, and I live again after I lose it. There he is now. Mrs. Bradley! Come then, oh, come then, Mr. Manoj is all ready for oh, you. Oh, good. Susie, I'll tell her to be late. I couldn't help it, honest. Not what I said. Quite all right. Let's go. Come on, come on what? into the parlor, oh, Mr. Malone, and catch oh, your breath. Right. Sure, there's no hurry, no hurry at all. Oh, I'm puffed. Oh, no, you shouldn't have killed yourself. You'll wait plenty for her from the altar onwards. Don't I know it? You're all the same, Mrs. Bratney. Once you get your man, you please yourself. Yes, certainly. <laughs> You don't run after a trolley bus once you've caught it. <laughs> Come on, Edgar, let's get out of here. Well, what's we, wrong uh, we were just uh, talking about that old fella across the road there. He's enough to get anyone down, but uh, suppose the police have their eye on him already. Who? What? Don't tell me you don't know. Don't sit there and tell me you haven't heard all the talk. Oh, she's a crying scandal throughout the whole district. Rubbish! Come on, Edgar. I'm waiting. Well, just a minute, love. This is interesting. Uh, what's it all about, Mrs. Bradley? What's it all about? Well, you may ask, Mr. Malone. That's what the whole street wants to know. What's it all about when a, when a dirty wee rat of a man appears from nowhere and walks into a vacant house right beneath your own door in a good district? And the very first thing he does, can you guess? <laughs> Whitewashes the downstairs front window. Two coats. Now, wasn't that a very funny thing to do? Now, next, we all notice he gets very queer, very suspicious in his actions. He begins to come and go, come and go, all day long, like a bee coming out of a hive. As if that wasn't bad enough, he begins to squint up and down to see if anyone's watching him, to see if the coast is clear. Clear for what, Mr. Malone, you may well ask. Clear for what? It'll be uh, three and eightpence, please, sir. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you. Oh, you want some change, That's sir? All right. Thank you very much, sir. <coughs> well, cheers. Come on, love. Oh, you make me so cross. All I said was I have to do my duty. Duty? Listening to all that filthy rubbish about a poor old man, yards and yards of it. You'd have been there yet if I hadn't run you out. The police do have to listen to things, you know. It's what's known as information received, and it can, goes a long way to detect and prevent crime, let me tell you. Oh, sure. But you can use a little common sense, I presume, in the police. I mean, it's not against regulations. You don't have to listen for hours to every malicious slander you come across. Couldn't you see at a glance that Mrs. Brackney has a sick mind and a very nasty That's one? quite beside the point. Even a raving lunatic can give you a good tip at times. Besides, I'm not interested in her. It's Mr. Snow I'm interested in. Why, you are? Oh, Ed oh I know, I know. He may be perfectly innocent, but the police can't take a chance on that. If everybody was as trusting as you are, sure there wouldn't be any need for a police force at all. Then I'd be out of a job and we couldn't get married. But you've got to have trust. We're all innocent until we're proved guilty. In court, yes. But not on the street? No. Oh, come on, Eddie. Well, I mean, uh, it's a bit different. Well, how is it different? <sighs> well... No, you listen. An old man moves into a little house alone. A sad little man whom nobody knows. He's very shy and probably very lonely. He widens the street windows and he locks up carefully every time he goes out. He locks up carefully because life has hurt him badly sometimes. Oh, and he's terribly afraid it might hurt him again. I That's see. all it is. Mm -hmm. Because some gossipy old woman starts spreading exaggerated rumors around, you jump to the conclusion he's a criminal. This isn't my day. Oh, Eddie, don't be angry. It's just that I can't bear to see you change. Well, what do you expect me to do? Sit up my bottom for the rest of my life thinking the world's a beautiful garden? 
that rate, I'll be the oldest detective constable on record. You don't understand, do you? I understand this where there's, where there's smoke, there's fire. Besides, this business may be my chance to get my promotion. So you're going to report it? Well, yes, certainly. I might get to handle the investigation myself. The persecution, you mean? Hmm? Oh, had enough. If all you can do is criticize, you better do it with somebody else. Eddie? Well, I can say this for your report, Malone. It covers a lot of paper. Oh, you, you mean you think there's nothing in it, sir? Not necessarily. There could be. It all seems to hang on this woman Bratney's story. Have you done any observation or checking? Well, no, not yet, sir. You see, I thought I'd see you first. Mm -hmm. You see, I thought with this present outbreak of attacks on young women and that young girl that was abducted out at Strand Millis last week, that this man might Malone. have had something. If we checked every old man who behaves strange as a possible sex maniac, we'd be snowed under. Well, sir, I just thought... And that's what you're paid for. Pardon, sir? You're paid to think. Yes. No. Well, it'll do no harm to check. I'll put you on to it for the next few days, see what happens. Thank you, sir. Personally, I think you're wasting your time. But anyone who can come up with as many ingenious theories as you have in this report deserves to get it out of his system. Thanks, sir. Mm, I'll cut along now and start at Mrs. Bratney's first thing tomorrow morning. Very good, sir. Who'd be young again? Did I not know? Right. Now's your chance. 8.45 on the dock. Crippen comes out for his milk. Regular clockwork. Like a machine, a rare but monster. Did Susan say anything before she left last night? No. Just walked in. Packed her bags. Threw my money on the table. And said, that's in lieu of notice. And walked out. <laughs> I almighty fly by night. That's the young women of today. Let her go, I say, in good riddance. No offence to you, of course, Mr. Malone. Oh, that's, that's all right. I expect she needed a change. Now, she needed. Isn't that what I mean? Not a thought for what I might need. Oh, no, no, no. That'd be too much to expect. Oh, the man that marries a selfish woman, may the Lord help him. Well, anyway, the uh, district inspector told me to watch here for a few days. He... That's if you don't mind. Certainly stay as long as you like. You're not keeping me back. So long as you're not in uniform, you'll bring no disgrace to me. Hardly say I have a fancy man at my age. All I want to see is justice done. Innocent children protected and the murderer brought to boot. What murder? No right to hear me. Oh, no, no, no. You just can't go around accusing people oh, of murder. No, I wasn't accusing nobody of nothing. I wouldn't like you to think I was. All I say is this. I've seen some queer things going on that I thought the police were entitled to know. Was I right or was I wrong? Well, you're quite right. That's why I'm here. Judge not, and don't fear the judge, as it says in the good book. Of course, um, I could have wrote an anonymous. Many a one would have. Yes, I suppose you could. The plant needs watering. Don't water the cactus. You can smoke if you like. I like to see a man smoke. The old man, God rest him, he smoked now and again. There he is, God bless him, Stanley Bratley. Station master of the Belfast and County Down Railway for years. Never took a drop in his life or looked at a woman. Except me, of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. Just the old pipe now and again, his only weakness. Hey, now that he's dead, I don't begrudge him the bit of money he spent on tobacco. Little enough pleasure he had in life, poor man. Yeah, I bet. Keep your eyes skin on that door. He'll not give you much time to study him. 
just stuck in and out like a rat out of a haystack. It's guilty conscience, of course. Hey. I could have wrote an anonymous uh, thought of it. That I don't deny. But no, no, no. <gasps> Said to myself today, Belly, you've always kept yourself straight forward and above board. If you had anything to say, you're out with it. Spotted out, regardless, fearless, or else shut your trap and forever held your tongue. Yeah. I've always been like that, Mr. Malone. I can't help it. Don't know how it is. Claim no credit for it, just the way God made me. Couldn't be bad for flea. See the clock or a cockroach on the floor there. I have to get Earl Barner from next door to come in and kill it for me. <laughs> Not that it bothers him much, boozy, bloodthirsty old heathen that he is. Works in the drainage department. Just the right place for him. Ah, I'm far too soft, far too soft, Mr. Malone. But sure, I'm only a woman. There's no denying that. There shall be faith, hope, and charity, as it says in the good book. And the greatest of these is charity. Mr. Malone. Now maybe you'll believe me after seeing a crawling exhibition for yourself. And it's not against the law yet to come down in your pajamas and take your milk in. Oh, no, 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 by no means, no. There's no crime in that. Oh, innocent as the day was born, to be sure, as you can see by the nice, quiet, calm way he does. Well, some old people are shy about being seen in the pajamas. <laughs> some old people shy about a lot of things. I could tell you some of the things they're shy about and would pin your ears back. Oh, no, look, for two days now, I, I, I've listened to you hinting about things that would pin my ears back. Well, now I want to hear something definite. Definite? Yes. Right. Maybe this will make you sit up. Some old people are so shy that when they buy a spade in a hardware shop, they get it all wrapped up special from head to foot. What are you talking about? Listen, what use is a spade in the house without a garden? Not even a window box. Yes, yes, all right. Who told you this? A niece of mine. Happens to work there. Poor child. The experience quite upset her. It was late one Friday evening when he went into the shop. And there was no one else about. Oh, like a horrible girl he looked. He closed the door behind him to make sure no one was following him. Went across to my alley to get this spade. Poor child, she was frozen to the spot. All she could see was these horrible, unblinking, hypernetic eyes. Like a great, evil, slimy snake that fastened on her. And she felt all the strength oozing from her as the board right through her, like lumps of burning coal full of hell's fire. Then boom! He lifts up a hedge clippers to cut her head off. That broke the spell and she got away. Poor child, she said she never fattened anything as quick in her life and it was all she could do to stop from screaming. Even then, he wasn't satisfied. He felt the blade to see if it was real sharp, and had Ellie put more paper around it to camouflage it. Just imagine, Mr. Malone, camouflaging a spade to carry it 50 yards to your own home, quite regardless of all the trouble he had given the poor wee girl. What's so private about a spade, eh? Tell me that. So he lifts it all wrapped up like a Egyptian mummy and went on his evil way. But 
do you think of that, Mr. Malone? Well, I'd say if your niece told you all that, she'd seen too many hot affairs. She never did, Philip. Well, it's not against the law to keep a spade in the house. Oh, no, no, no. There's nothing illegitimate about that, but it could lead to a lot of illegitimate things. Well, there's some old people buy lots of things they don't really need. It happens all the time. No, no, no. Oh, no. He bought that spade because he needed it and needed it badly. Yes. What for? What for? Well, you may ask, Mr. Malone, what for? Well, I'll just tell you. Drains. Trains? Trains. Drains. There's very little Jimsy Barner couldn't tell you about drains. I have rode it out miles and miles of them, big ones as well as wee ones. From Stormont to the City Hall. I and the Ford Road and Sandy Row as well. Look. Take your dirty sewer rods off of my bar. I report it to the public health department. Right to your old mother, oh, boy. Stop. Send her all you can. And don't forget for her, you rogue, that you're an Irishman. Oh, <laughs> you'll have the police. Oh, heaven forbid. We don't want that. It's a bad enough pub as it says without that, God knows. Cheers. Slant you. Uh, do you come in here often? Hey. As often as I get the chance. <laughs> uh, dear, uh, there's an old fella called Snow come in. Go to Blaze. Do you know Snow? The mystery man, do you know him? Uh, well, no, no, I, I don't know him well, but he was sort of uh, friendly with an uncle of mine once, and uh, he must be getting on a bit now. Old Snow, he's 75 if he's a day. I can all clean shirt about you. Poor old sir, he's a, he's a bit gone in the head, a bit soft upstairs, you Not know. Not too bad, I hope. Bad enough, he give me a hell of a time, but I can tell you. Oh, huh? Well, you see, his sewer was blocked, so of course I was sent to clear it. Well, I wrote it this way, and I wrote it that way, but nothing doing. Then I discovered the blockage was in Snow's backyard. So the thing to do then was to consult Blake. Who's Blake? Blake, the sewage Bible. Oh, the thing to do then was to get into Snow's backyard and roll it out, you see, to the main sewer. But do you think Earl Snow would let me into his backyard? Not in your sweet life. Oh, so what did you do? What did I do? I had to go down to the city hall and get written authority from the Sunday inspector for permission to enter Snow's backyard. Meantime, of course, when we arrived back, the blockage had cleared itself, like sometimes they do that. But you should have heard the neighbours in the street. They were looking for Jimsy Barner's blood and called me every fancy name on the calendar. Quite <laughs> right. Ah, right, away, boy, and boil your head. There was one old crab, and she spread the rumour that Snow was a multiple murderer. Oh. Just a mind, she said there was a woman's pelvis was brought in snow sewer. <laughs> Holy heavens! A woman's pelvis, the biggest bone in a human body. I say she couldn't get very far without her she pelvis. Could not, could you? No. <laughs> hey, you corporation fellas ever do any work That's at him. all? That's him. Typical, typical. Sits behind the bar all day, warm in his backside. Hates to see anybody else enjoying them. Himse only himself. <laughs> a drainage officer. The streets of Belfast could be flooded, and here he stands irrigating his gut. Typical. Belfast, the most ungrateful city in the British Empire. Now get your dirty sewer rods out of here. When he gets into your bus, sniff out loud, make a fuss. He's just a dirty sanitary man. Oh, shut Disgusting. up. Disgusting. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Nothing like a nice cup of tea, as my beloved Stanley always used to say. Yes, thanks. Mm. What do you think of your dear old gentleman now? Well, just because he buys a spade at the same time as drains a block, it doesn't prove a thing. It doesn't? Mm. Of course it doesn't. Wait, he, as for this furtive business of his, well, he's just old, that's all. Old people act queer. Mm -hmm. It'll maybe happen to you very soon. Oh, very queer indeed. Some old folk act that queer that they ask 15-year-old girls to come inside for a little chat. What's that? You haven't told me that before. I don't tell all of them. If I did, everyone would be as wise as me. Well, tell me a name. That is if there is a girl at all. You don't believe me? Very well. I didn't want to drag anyone else into this dirty business, especially the young and innocent, but you've that heart and you'll get it. What are you doing? Mr. McQuig! Clear. It's clear you're there, love. I'm here, Mrs. B. Hey, look, daughter, can I go into you for a minute? It's very important. Uh, all right. Come on in. Come on, next door. 
What do you mean? Come on, next. I don't go next. I just asked you for the girl's name. No, you should be telling you that's what I said. Oh, merciful heavens! Oh, nearly cut the blooming heart of myself. Oh, no fucking peace. That's the silence, you. Sorry. Hold on a minute, can't you? Wait a minute. Hold on. Come on. Hello, Cleo, love. Go on on in, Mr. Malone. This is Cleo. Uh, Cleo Patrick McQuig. This is Mr. Malone, Cleo. He's... Uh, I'm a police officer, Cleo. What? Well, I haven't done anything wrong. No, 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 pet. Don't you worry. It's not you he's after. He only wants to ask a few questions. Hmm? Just uh, routine, you know. Oh, it's not even that. Now, Mrs. Batney and I have just been talking about the old gentleman who lives opposite, and... Uh, she said you'd met him, is that so? Ah, oh, you mean Mr. Snow? Who oh, well, I? He just popped out of his door one day and he gave me a bar of chocolate. Brazil nut. Mm-hmm. And what happened then? Why, oh, yeah, what do you mean? Like, he means, dear, uh, what suggestions did the accused take upon himself to make after you had received his gift? Ah, oh, you mean asking me in? Exactly. Well, did he? Aye, but it didn't go. <laughs> Catch me. I wouldn't be found dead in there. <laughs> I wouldn't be too sure about that. Why not, Claire? What's so bad about him? Oh, nothing, I guess. Nothing that I know of. He's just now square and old misery, that's all. <laughs> what did I go in there for? And what did he say to you? Oh, he said he got something nice to show me, something I'd never seen before. Lord knows what that would be. Lord knows indeed. <gasps> he said, just come in for a second and see me wee surprise. I've been working on it for six months, oh, he said. Oh, the hypocrite, the whited sepulchre. Why do we Stanford? How do we put up with it? And the police? Where are they? Running after parked cars and sissy cyclists with no tail lamps. Come on now, pet. Tell him who saved you. Saved me? Who saved me? When he tried to entice you in. Who called you back? Oh, that you did, Mrs. No, I certainly did, love. Certainly, Cleo says I. Come here, I want you urgent. Didn't I, love? And you run straight across the street and into my house safe and sound. Didn't you, love? And I slammed the door behind you. Aye, and you took the chocolate from me and chucked it in the back of the fire. Didn't have to make a frizzle. Aye, uh, burnt the chocolate. See, now I made a mistake. Should have kept it for Sir Bernard Spilsbury to see, so I should. Why, is he? Smart old fellow knows all about sweets, dear. Sounds as if he could buy his own. Oh, I'll never forget the look on Earl Crippen's face when I slammed that door behind her. I put a wean to fold. Well, come on, Mrs. B, we'll get but back. Do I haven't come on, no. anything yet at all. Oh, all right, I'll hear it later. Thanks, Claire, and uh, don't bother your head with this, all right? Say, what's biting her? She nuts or something? How old are you, Claire? Fifteen. I see. Are you alone? Yes. Come over and you hear what old Barmy Bella's been up to. I'm coming. Oh, I know that old fellow was up to no good the day he moved in. Doesn't take a college girl to tell a thing like that. She don't miss much to you, Mrs. Burton. Who, me? Wouldn't take me to the class of neighbours I have. Watch and pray, as it says in the yes, good book. Yes, well, I'm tired of watching. I don't think I'll do it much longer. What's the time? <sighs> Nearly five, my. Right, he'll be out any minute. Look, look, look. Here, here he comes. Look at him. He's coming. He's coming. Watch him. Watch him. Oh, there he is, cripping himself. Watch the ship, the crawling ways on him. Mark that. Look, you see that? The way he tugs on the door handle to make sure all his grim secrets are safe. Lord alone knows what he has in that case in that paper parcel. Go on, follow him. Follow him now. Follow him. That's all I ask. Hurry, hurry, hurry. All hurry, right, hurry. All right, calm yourself. Now, listen, we're very grateful for any information. Just so long as it isn't neighbors making trouble for each other. Who ever heard of such a thing? The police heard of it ten times a week. Not the respectable people that don't. Not from the likes of me, the police don't hear no lies, and don't you forget it. To be called a troublemaker in my own home, if my Stanley was here, he'd fix you. And wasn't you, Stanley boy? Go on, follow that man, follow him. You'll see for yourself. A nasty, multiple murderer! <laughs>
Hey, Susie. Oh, hello, Mr. Fabian. How's the yard? Oh, well, what are you doing around here? I pass here every day. It's the way I always take home from school, remember? What are you doing here, courting Bella Bratney? Oh, Susie, don't, please. How about the other day? I'm, I'm sorry. Well, don't just stand there. Walk me home. I'd like to, but I'm supposed to be on duty. Duty? You're not snooping on that poor old son. No, soul. I'm not snooping. I'm carrying out a serious investigation. And I think it may prove to be very serious indeed. Huh? Oh, don't be so pompous. Oh, go and sort out your blackboard jungle. There you are, Mr. College policeman. Canoodling with your fancy school teacher. Not a thought for the public safety. Not a thought for your girls cut up and pickled. Not a thought for the wee lass that vanished up the Millis. Not a thought for old women butchered in their beds. Not a thought for me. My lord, the old chap's been stealing her from municipal properties. What do you propose we should do? Well, pull him in, sir, and it's an offence against the corporation bylaws, section 21, clause uh, 4. It's an offence against any bylaws. Well, pull him in, you think? If he is up to something serious, you wouldn't want to put him on his guard, no, would you? Oh, no, sir, but if we well, have let's him see, in, he's been carrying earth into a small house in an attaché case. Yes. Ten times a day. Let's see, that'd be about um, five cubic feet a day. Well, if I buy seven in a week, that'd be, uh... It's one and a half cubic yards, sir. Now, uh, yes, my lord, that, that's an awful lot of earth to carry into a small pile of house. Now, if you were taking it out and not in, I'd say you were tunnelling through to the nearest bank vault. Where's the nearest bank, my lord? Oh, that's Shaftesbury Square, sir, 250 yards. Yes, no, no, as no. he's taking it in and not out, that information is useless to us, is it not? Oh, yes, sir, useless, sir. Look, uh, don't agree with me unless you've reason to. If you think I'm a fool, you'll say so, won't you? Uh, very good, sir. Hmm, so where do we go for ideas? He wouldn't let in the drainage man, not even into the yard. Right. Then he invites this young girl in. You've checked that? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. That sounds right. Has he no other visitors at all? None that I saw, sir. Well, don't tell me the Reverend Mac Vicar hasn't called yet. Not while I was watching, sir. He will. Well, Malone, we've checked this old man's history, and there's nothing against him anywhere. He used to work in a funeral parlor before his retirement. Call himself an undertaker's assistant. Peaceful, uh, serious kind of job, that. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he's buried hundreds, I agree, but all on the quiet side of the law. Look, it's worth another week. Very good, sir. Uh, two things. Watch out for any other visitors and uh, try and get a look inside the house, eh? Right, sir. Bring me something definite this time. Get this off my mind.
Some damn suspicion. <laughs> what the devil do you want? It's the duty of every law abiding citizen to come to the aid of the police. Boy, he's having a friendly wrestle. Practising for your annual athletics. I'm sorry, sir, to see you in such bad company. Come on down and get it. Went to question with a paint. No, thanks. I've no time now. Okay, some other time I'll keep you at your word. That fellow's worth watching, Cons, but I'd keep my eye on him if I was you. And you too, Barner. Right to your old mother, boy. Send her all you can. And don't forget where you're going. You're an Irish man. Gone four days. I know you'd be back. Back, says I, as sure as a God in heaven. Did you see what one of them old fellas done last week? No. Gave his wife tetanus, that's what he done. Left it for him, done her in. Oh, oh she oh, suffered Mrs. dagging, neither at it all the time, no, day and look, daily. Look, Mrs. Bradney, I'm looking for Snow and I can't find him. He hasn't even taken his milking. Have you seen him? No. No, he hasn't taken his milking. Something strange afoot. You mark my words, some. I have it. I have it. The weed of the evil slimy toad. I know now. I know now what he bought the spade for. What? He's digging a tunnel over to my house. Oh, drop oh. it, can't you? Oh, the cunning of these atavistics. All right, all right. But it's be your funeral as well as mine. Then he'll hop off to Philadelphia like Crippen before him. Cut it out, will you? Just give that bad old tongue of yours a rest for once. What's that? Insult me in my own house, would you, you pup? You wait till I tell your inspector on you. I'll learn your manner, jailbred college whelp you. Oh, if only my Stanley was here. Right, Malone, you found the door locked and the back windows locked, as we might have expected. Then what did you do? I kept a close watch on the house, sir, for another three days, but there was never a sign of him. I think he's made a bolt for it, sir. There's uh, four days' milk on the step. This is it, then. We can break into the house. Come on. Well, sir... Come on! and see what's under that. Yes, sir. Let's go upstairs. Watch yourself now. That man's desperate. Now he's a thief. The rain of pearls at an end. The powers of bills above his beard is the lion in his den. Jack and his daughter, you're at it again. You shut your mouth, Barner. Shut your mouth. Open your Keep away from me. Keep away from me, Barner. Don't come near me. Open your way. Don't wander around that door. Open your way. Clear, clear. Tell Inspector I want a margin. You didn't bother you. He's a wise man. He's way six Seeds are magic. Uh -huh. Maybe he died happy. You have better gardens in here than you ever find outside. Well, God save him anyway. Hey, come on, come on down here. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. 
at this, Inspector, and then maybe you'll have yourself be so ready another time. Come on, have a look at this. Here's something to pin your ears back. He is real horror for years, just as I said. Now you'll see what a horrible monster... Be quiet, The old gentleman's dead. Gent gentleman, did you say? Funniest kind of gentleman I ever heard of. Now, Sons, will you find the spade? Yes, sir. There's one behind the door. Oh, what else? You started digging yet? Not yet, Why the devil not now? Well, there didn't seem to be any reason, sir, if you look behind the curtain. i get that woman get out, out of here. Get out, Tyson. Chrysanthemums. Just making a garden, that's all. Well, son. See, we jumped to the wrong conclusions. You mean I did? It's all right, son. We all make mistakes. Horrible, gruesome. Don't look in there, Annie. Don't look in there, Cleo. Oh, did you see the spade, the big fat feeler pound? Oh, God knows what they'll dig up in there, there. But for the grace of God, go thou, Ellie, you too, Cleo, as it says in the good book. Get away from this house! I'll talk about the police. Come on, move! Now listen to me, a lot of you. Don't be such fools as to listen to anything that woman says. The poor old chap just wanted a garden, that's all. He was trying to make one, inside the house. He probably worked too hard at it, so he died. Now move along, there'll be trouble. That's not a lot of good the peelers are anyway. Let that poor old creature die in his bed. Anyway, I wasn't far wrong. I know right that there was something wrong. Look, look at the mess he's made of that good corporation house. I'd take a penny or two to put that right. And I suppose that's what we're supposed to pay rates for, is it? Is it? Pay for what destruction? Oh. Hello, Susan. What are you doing here? I just heard about Mr. Snow. Is he? Yes, he's dead. Oh, poor old man. Send for the ambulance, sir. Yes, do that, Henderson, and uh, get the house boarded up, will you? I'll be at the office if you need me. Yes, sir. I'm so ashamed I could be sick. You want to know. Is that any kind of excuse? Hmm? Come on, I'll walk you home.
Armchair Theatre will be back next Sunday at five past nine.